Hey, what's going on everybody? Samuel Kim here and I'm back with another one. The Grizz got a big dub this weekend against Northern Colorado. They got a big test at home against Sacramento State. It's going to be a big game. We'll get into that a little later. But the Grizz got a big dub this weekend. Got the shutout 40-0. to zero. I think the Grizz defense is really playing at a high level right now. You know, they're executing at a high level. They're um, getting pressure on the quarterback. They're able to get stops on defense, get off the field. Obviously, Northern Colorado was a defeated team they haven't won a game yet this year so take that for what it is but i think still a 40 to 0 win is still impressive so especially considering this team has played some really good teams pretty close so we'll take that for whatever it is let's get right into this game breakdown you know i don't got too much today i got quite a few plays on here because i do think there was a lot of positives out of this game but in terms of just like analysis i don't think there's too much i think we out physical them I think we were just a better team from start to finish. We got off to a slow start, but in the end, it ended, it ended up how we wanted it. So let's get straight into it. You got this first third and two during the game, and you're going to have Clifton pull it and get about 10 yards. He's reading that end. This guy right here. So you got two off the edge, but they both crashed pretty hard. They got that band block for one of them. So... Essentially, he's probably really reading this guy and the tight ends bam and whoever's on the end Which he does and we're able to get some good yardage off of it First and ten Man, I think so after watching this play I Think so you got the motion the pre-snap motion the guys going with them. So that tells us it's man coverage you got man eyes here, man eyes here, one high safety. And this guy is really, I think he's probably watching the tight end. Um, but it looks like man coverage over here. So you're going to have Aaron um, is going to run this deep take route is what it looks like. And I think Clifton was looking for him. I think he wanted to hit the deep route. And you have Aaron, or you have Junior who's running this um, looks like a sail route from the inside. And it just seems like by the time Clifton got back down, it looks like he wanted to take the shot to Aaron. But when he got back down to Junior, it was a little too late and he was a little late with the ball. But Junior's going to get open on the route if you watch it. If you watch it right here, Junior gets open, but he's just a little late. I think that one high safety, that one high safety was over the top of Aaron. And he wasn't able to get the shot play that he wanted. It is what it is. I think this is an interesting dynamic that they've been putting into the offense um, as of late. They've been putting Eli and Nick on this motion. They did it with actually Xavier as well, but I think it was a little bit of a different look when they did it with Xavier. Um, but you got Osmo on this motion, and I don't know if Clifton is reading this or if it's a straight give, but if he is reading it, I'm guessing he's probably reading this end right here. Um, I feel like this guy's kind of just playing in the middle. He's kind of not doing too much. He's, he's kind of playing it too nonchalant. He doesn't really come up feel very hard or anything like that. So he doesn't really threaten us. He gives it to Osmo. And we get a loss of downs. And third and 11. And we're going to get sacked. So it seems to me. So you got this going in the flats. I think Aaron was wanting some deep type of um, stop route or curl, maybe a post curl. Looks like you got him on the cross hash, um, probably influencing the safety, the one high safety. Probably trying to influence this guy with this cross hash route, cross hash route. And then, you know, but it just seems like they're really bailing. They're, they're really trying to get out of there. It looks like there's some cloud over here. You got this corner right here. But you have the safety pushing over top. So this is going to be three clouds strong. It's third and 11, so it's not a bad coverage. They're basically just rushing three, keeping everybody else back. Realistically, you know, you would probably want to try to hit probably one of these seams over here or one of these seams here if you had a route in those, in those areas of the field. But we don't. So it is what it is. They end up getting the sack. They get the best of us on this play, and we move on. So now to Northern Colorado's first offensive drive of the game. Like I said, I think we were able to get a lot of good pressure on them in this game. I think we were able to 
you know, um, affect the quarterback. I think they one of the quarterbacks got hurt. I hope he's okay, but he took a pretty hard hit um, by Kale. Kale slammed him down. It was a crazy play. Number three was pretty banged up as well throughout the game. So, you know, their quarterbacks went through it, but I think they'll be all right. So you got their first offensive drive here, and let's just watch Gubb. Gubb is a player who I believe is really good. I think he's been working. I think he's been making plays. Um, you know, he gives defenses problems week in and week out. You have to game plan for him on our defense, and, you know, he's going to win very easily here. Just, I mean, so we're rushing four, and Gubb's working on the left guard, and it seems like the left guard has decent leverage on him. Gubb's over, Gubb's in an odd, so we're in an odd front here. Odd meaning we have the, the center covered up. Even would mean that the center is not covered up, but this is odd. We got the center covered up, but given that it's odd in odd front, the guard seems like he has pretty good leverage on him. Given that Gubb went outside of him, I guess he just overset inside, thinking that he had to over adjust, and Gubb made him pay. Got to the quarterback for the sack. I mean, he wins fairly easily. Yeah. He, like kind of tripped him I don't know what he was <laughs> it is what it is he got a sack for it so one for the good guys so you're gonna get this RPO and looks like you know basically everybody we have we have everybody down everybody's kind of biting on the run we basically have what's this one two three if you want to count him three four five six seven eight we got everybody in the box i don't really know how, how you want to count this because he's i mean he's a dn so i feel like he's technically in the box even though he's outside the tackle he's in the box he's in the box he's in the box he's in the box do we count this guy who's obviously about to blitz and then we count this so like basically got nine guys in the box <laughs> so i don't know if i would call this zero but it's definitely man coverage on the outside and Northern Colorado is going to try to run this RPO to the outside receiver. They write this bubble slant by number one, bubble by number two. And um, Corbin makes a good play on the ball. Great play. Simple defensive execution. Man, this was a really good ball. This is a really good ball by Clifton. So you're going to get this slant. You're gonna get this slant by number three, by Aaron. And, you know, the window's not super big, but there's a big enough window that he can get the ball in there if he's willing to fit it in there. You can't be late, you gotta be on time. And he was right on time with the ball. Great play, great catch, great yardage after the catch. Let's look at it right here. Just right on the face mask of Aaron and Aaron does the rest. I think it was awesome. All right. All right, so we got this power run play by Eli, who's a, I don't know if it's semi-finalist for the Jerry Rice Award. He's up for the Jerry Rice Award. He could potentially win it. Um, I haven't looked at any of the other nominees or their statistics, so I don't know where he compares to, but I think he's having a pretty good year for a freshman. Um, I know he's a redshirt freshman, but he's having a really good year. I think he runs the ball very well. I think he sees the holes very well. He's got good agility. He's able to make guys miss. He's obviously not a little guy. He's got, you know, he's a big guy for sure. So um, I think he's going to be a good back for Montana for years going forward. But we got this power running play. You're going to get the guard pulling here. And, I mean, he basically goes through untouched. Looks like he doesn't even get touched. Stiff arm. I think he might actually take this for more yardage if Aaron, who's doing a good job trying to get his block, he's got inside leverage, he's down to do everything to shield him from the running back, you know, sometimes a play just comes your way, you know, Aaron's doing his job, I think if that would have been a little cleaner, Eli might have run for more yardage, but look at the stiff arm, he's really good at the stiff arm, and just happens to run into Aaron's guy, it's unfortunate, it is what it is though, so this is what I was talking about with those motions, um, you can tell they're really trying to get 
besides just having them in the backfield with Osmo and, and um, Eli. And I think this is very good with, with, for Eli because I think he's very good um, with the ball in his hands. I think he can make things happen outside the tackles, inside the tackles. We saw the run against UC Davis. We saw the run against Idaho, even though it was a touchdown, like a 50-yard run. Um, back-to-back games. Before this game, he had had runs of 50-plus yardage, and that seems to be something he has the ability to do. So I think um, Coach Pease is doing a good job of trying to find ways to get him the ball and have him be um, a part of the offense in other ways outside of just getting the ball out of the backfield on reads with Clifton. I think this is an interesting way. We unfortunately didn't complete this ball, but... um, I like the play design and I like, you know, the thought process behind it. You know, if he catches this, he's probably running for 10 to 15 yards minimum. You got these guys running off slash blocking. I think the only reason we're blocking here is because the the guy started to recognize it. But, you know, it is what it is. Would have been a fairly decent play, I think, but couldn't hold on to it. It is what it is. I know he'll make it next time. So here we go. We got a third and six. And we're going to run this mesh concept. So mesh concept, you got Junior coming underneath on the mesh. You got Schaefer going over top on the mesh. And you have Keelan running the OTB or over the ball, which gives us a triangle. So I want you to look at the picture after this. It's kind of hard to see, but you got one, two, three. I think Schaefer's pretty open. He's not looking at him. Junior's not a bad play either. Technically, Junior's probably the first read because he's going underneath on the on the rub. So, uh, Schaefer's really working for Junior to get him open. But everybody runs with Junior, which is probably to be expected. Junior is probably a bigger threat than Schaefer. No offense to Schaefer, but offensively, Junior is probably a bigger threat. So that's probably why they had their eyes on him. Clifton has his eyes on Junior as well. That's probably why the defenders have their eyes on him. But Schaefer is pretty wide open here. I think we get an easy first down and maybe more you know we're on the 20 he probably gets inside the 15 or 10 yard line with this catch um ended up being another drop it was a little low and behind um so we didn't convert that third down it is what it is uh we move on but just wanted to kind of explain that concept to you guys the otb the two guys meshing we had the running back on a wheel over here. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. I think I called that out when he first ran the wheel, but mesh is a key concept for a lot of teams. A lot of teams run it. It's a man beater. It can be a zone beater. I think it's a little better in man than it is for zone because it can get cloudy in zone, you know, because a lot of times in those mesh concepts, you're sitting down in the zone. I've been taught both ways, but um, I know a lot of times when I was taught the mesh, you're taught to sit down in the zone and it can get weird because sometimes defenses are in zone, but they, you know, they pass things off. So it looks like it might be man and they let you go and you, you know, it, it gets kind of weird. So it's better in man. It's easier. Everybody knows what to do. And, you know, we had them right there. Just couldn't uh, connect on it. So, you know, it's the first quarter, eight minutes left in the first quarter. We've had two drives so far. I feel like we've had all the right play calls. We just haven't executed. So I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a point of us not being able to um, call the right plays. I just think we weren't executing well at a high level in the first quarter, which led to us going scoreless in the first quarter. But our defense, they had no issues all night. There was one play on here that I thought was really impressive by Northern Colorado, and I'll break it down when we get to it. Um, But they really didn't have anything going offensively all night. I'm putting, you know, most of the plays I put on here for this game were um, all of our high, all of our sacks, whatever I thought we did really good. You know, we didn't really struggle stopping them on defense. You know, as you see right there, that's the only play that we had on there on a third and one. They try to run it up the middle. And I mean, they're just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say about the effort and the effort by Northern Colorado, you know, maybe they just don't have the, the type of pieces and recruiting and things like that to be successful. But you got Levi making this play. Levi gets, you know, Levi's on the edge right here. Yeah. Levi's on the edge right here. He's going to crash down. Nobody's going to block him. And the defender runs right into him. I don't know if 42 is maybe nobody's blocking him. He's right there. You're not going to go anywhere. Third and one. That's a play where we would love to be successful at a high rate on third and fourth and one offensively and defensively, be able to get off the field on defense, be able to stay on the field on offense. Um, I think our defense did that really well this game, showing that, you know, they got that 40-0 dub. So 
I put this on here. This is that same mesh. Well, this is a little different. This is mesh, but it's not the same. I don't think they have an OTB here. I think maybe you have a corner route here by Keelan. And I think maybe you have a corner route down here as well. I can't fully tell, but I know you have this swing here. But this is mesh. This is mesh. Schaefer is working for, for um, Junior. And this looks like man coverage. Nobody's on Schaefer. I don't know why. But this guy's definitely covering... Um, the tight end you don't he doesn't even have to do that juniors wide open he didn't have to make this hit here what I think he should have done is just make him go underneath you know I've always been taught as long as you make so look he's he's on junior right here make him bow underneath he'll never catch up just make him take the path of most resistance to cover junior and we win on that play but he runs them over here. They call offensive pass interference. I think it's the correct call. They might have called, I believe, also on this play. They called targeting on number four for this hit right here. So two penalties on that play. I think offensive pass interference. I think that might be a 10-yard penalty. This might be 15. It might have offset. I don't know how all that stuff works. There were two penalties on this play. Definitely offensive pass interference here. People might debate the targeting here. I think once you get to a few different angles, it definitely looked like the crown of his helmet had hit. Um, Racanelli around the face mask and things of that nature so it is what it is we move on so you're gonna get this deep corner route here looks like the same type of concept they had ran um, earlier in the first quarter with Aaron down at the bottom of the screen with Aaron and um, Junior as well but you're gonna get Junior here I think Clifton kind of was nervous to throw this because you know this safety is looking directly at him and maybe he could have tried to fit it in there. Maybe not, you know. We don't know. I, I don't know. I think I think he could have maybe got it in there. But I'm not mad at him for not throwing it in there. Because that is kind of a, a tight throw. And you don't know the athletic abilities of this safety. But you got the clear out route up here. I don't know if this corner had fallen off either. I can't see after it gets to this point. So I don't know if that corner fell off. Maybe that's not why he threw it. But it looks like he's about to throw it right here. And then something causes him not to throw it. And then we get sacked. So another first down play, making it second and 14, getting us behind in the chains. But I'm just kind of trying to illustrate some of the things that, you know, I think the right plays were called in the early on in the game. I just don't think the execution was there. I just don't think we were able to, to um, connect on some of these routes and things. So that's why it looked like maybe we were off to a slow start. Also, you know, coming off a of buy, I know a lot of people had seen that stat that I think we were one in seven coming off buys in the past eight seasons or whatever it was. And maybe eight seasons, past eight seasons under Hauk, the one win being coming in 2021. But, you know, we were able to get the 40 0 dub. Started off slow. I was, you know, I didn't expect us to come out fast and shooting on all cylinders coming off a bye after a big win against Idaho. You know, I kind of expected us to be kind of sluggish, kind of get our feet underneath us. And that's what we did. But once we did get our feet underneath us, I think we were smooth sailing ahead. So you're going to get this screen here. You got the screen. And then you got like doubles. You got like a fade. I think. I don't think this concept is really important down here, but you definitely have this swing, slant, and a, and a fade route. I think these guys are just decoys. I don't know, maybe Junior's in the progression, maybe, you know, because he seems like he's running a slant opposite of what everybody else over here is doing, swing and the fade right right here. But, you know, they work the, the, they work the, the screen over here to Racanelli. He's unable to come down with it. I thought maybe Chris might come down with it. Ugh. he dropped it though but uh, this is on second and 14 so you know I think maybe we get five to eight yards on this if it's completed so say he catches it right there you know we got this blocked up we got him there AJ might be able to get there I don't know the picture doesn't look too pretty not gonna lie now that you're I'm letting it play through and seeing the numbers but we'd like to have this completed. Unfortunately, it wasn't, so it is what it is. I kind of thought it was cool. That's one of the reasons I put it on here. Well, the main reason I put it on here was because of the down in the distance to show how we, you know, we got a sack and then we're already behind in the chain. So then now it's second, and now it's about to be third and 14. So this kind of just illustrates the slow start that we had in the first quarter. Some of the woes, dropping the ball here and there, you know, 
it's just those bi-week woes. I call them bi-week woes, you know. Trying to get off that bye week, trying to start fast, trying to get back into the rhythm of playing in the game. You know, it's been two weeks since you played the game, so things like that happen. Third and 14. Clifton's going to scramble. We get a holding call here as well. I think they called the holding call on Casey here. Um, but th that kind of was the story of the game. I think we had like nine penalties for 90 yards. I think... Northern Colorado maybe had 30 penalty yards. I don't know how many penalties exactly, but they might have had like 30 penalty yards. But penalties are something that have, and holding is something that has definitely showed up on our, when it, when I'm watching our games back, holding is definitely something that we've, we've. I think we might have had like four or five holding penalties in this game. Not saying that all of those penalties are justified. I think there were like one or two of them that were close. But, you know, I think that's something that has definitely reared its ugly head game in and game out for us so you're gonna get really just three verts here you got aaron running a vertical over here racanelli jr and i think that's keelan at the bottom all running goes northern colorado's rushing four basically putting everybody else in a what's this look like this is gonna be quarters they're just getting in quarters so you got a quarter a quarter he's getting to that quarter he's getting to this quarter and you got this corner on this quarter of the field so you're gonna get quarters coverage here basically just backing everybody else up three guys and hooks underneath in the underneath coverage and he possibly maybe could have hit Eli but you know he got flushed to the left so he doesn't even see Eli it's really him and Aaron Aaron decides to come back but you know I don't think Clifton wanted to take a chance on it so it is what it is third and 14 we punted it and pinned them inside their 15-yard line. Another great break on the ball. I thought this was awesome. I thought this was awesome by Jace. You know, he's been getting a lot of playing time this year. He's a younger guy. Been mostly a special teams guy up until this point. Getting some a lot of reps on defense this year. And I think he's doing the best with what he's gotten this year in terms of his defensive reps. You know, he had the hit against UC Davis. Big time hit against UC Davis. Um, I don't think he has any interceptions or anything this year, but... You know, he's making plays like this, and I think number 80 was probably their best receiver, 80 or 15. 80 made a really good play that leads me to believe he you know, that would make me say that he's their best receiver, probably. Really good release, really good catch. But, you know, for Jace to make this play on the, uh, make this break, especially playing off coverage, you know, he diagnoses it, sees the break, breaks on the ball, and gets the PBU. I just think it was a really good play. Really good play. So, yeah. That was first down. You know, they didn't really have anything else going that drive, so they punted it back to us, and we got the ball back at the end of the first quarter. Now, this is where things get really interesting because you have Kiali'i. I don't want to mispronounce his name. I think I partially am mispronouncing it, but we're just going to call him Ayat, Brian Ayat's son. I do need to learn his pronunciation of his name because I do want to call his name, but... Um, Ayat, Brian Ayat's son, K I L E Ayat. Anyway, he got his first playing time as a true freshman. I don't know if a lot of people know, but there's this new rule, redshirt rule that, well, there's been this rule for the last couple years. I think it first came in in 2019 when maybe Solster was a freshman or maybe Junior's freshman year. But um, freshmen now can play four games. For the last couple years, freshmen have been able to play four games and maintain their red shirt. Well, now the NCAA just announced a couple weeks ago, or they just clarified. I don't know if it was announced, clarified, something like that. But now, you know, being that freshmen can play four games and maintain their red shirt, it is also understood that freshmen, like, playoffs don't count towards freshman eligibility. So, um, you got a freshman like Kali'i Ayat, and he can play the rest of the games for the regular season. And if he ends up, you know, finding his, his footing and being able to play at a high level, he can play all the playoff games as well. Um, I was really impressed with what he showed. I think thought he was very comfortable. You know, there were some missed reads that he had, a couple things that, you know, definitely can be cleaned up. But it's his first game in action. You know, this is his first time playing. This kid was in high school last year. So, you know, uh, I'm definitely not judging him off any mistakes that he made off this game. I think he re looked really good. I think he looked really comfortable to be a freshman. This kid's probably 18, 19 years old playing Division One college football. So I was really impressed and um, I'm excited to see where his career is going to go. But here's his first play 
um, second play. It's second and eight. But here's his first throw of his career. They had a run. We only got two yards on the run prior to this. This is his first throw of his college career. We're going to get this curl route. So we're running this curl concept. It's mirrored. You got arrows by the number two receivers or the hips, which is um, you got junior at H and you got the tight end here. You got these arrows. That's to push out the, the underneath coverage. So you got these guys playing underneath. To me, this looks like cover three. Yeah, this is cover three. So you're going to drop this guy into a, a either curl to flat or a hook. This guy's going one high. He's a third. He's a third. And you got this curl concept. These guys are pushing the underneath coverage out. So this guy, we want him to hook up onto that. We want this guy to hook up onto that. This guy pushes out. You got Aaron coming right behind him on the curl. And he makes a guy miss and misses and gets what he wants. Gets what he gets. But I think it was a really good throw, really on time throw by um, Ayat and, you know, making plays on his first time of, you know, college football action. Ball on him. Aaron gets the ball in his hands and does the rest. I think it's awesome. Eli, I mean, I just love watching Eli run. I think he runs really smoothly, but I think he runs aggressively too. He finishes runs the right way, the way you want your running backs to finish the runs. You know, he's falling forward every time, trying to put his shoulder into somebody. I just really enjoyed this run. You're going to get power here. You got the guard pulling right here, coming around. You got the H, I think he is in this formation. He's an H. Um, getting that block inside. And Eli does the rest. Just puts his shoulder down into this corner, number 23. This is what I mean when I mean corners don't want to tackle. So Aaron's he only makes this tackle because he happens to be right there. He doesn't really want to make this tackle. He's just there. And Eli makes him pay. Just awesome. So start of the second quarter. Kali e. Ayat is still in the game. And we got Osmo running the ball now. And he's running it really effectively. I'm gonna get this wham across. Bam, wham, whatever you want to call it, by the tight end. Wham across, inside, and we get about nine on first down. <sighs> great run, great first down run, great success. Man, I got, man, so this play was awesome. Um, we actually get a holding call on this. I'm still kind of confused as to where the holding call came from. That's a different story. We're going to get a holding call on this. I think Ayat wanted to take a shot to Aaron here, and it ended up not being there. But what I did like about this play, even though it was called back, I loved how he, you know, he made something happen after the play broke down. And that's something that I think Clifton does really well. Um, I think he can get out of the pocket. I think he can make things happen outside of the pocket. That's something we saw him do really well against UC Davis. I don't know so much if he had to do it. He did it a little bit in the Idaho game, but I think that's a, an, a facet of Clifton's game, and Ayat made it look really easy right here. Watch. He's going to get pressure from behind, scramble out, and he's going to find Osmo, and Osmo's going to get inside the 10 or 5-yard line. I mean, like I said, it got called back, but I just thought this was really record. I mean, just look at this. Look at this on the scramble. Feels the pressure, gets out of there, and puts the ball right on Osmo. Great throw. Like I said, it was a holding. It is what it is. We're not going to harp on it, but kind of sucks. Great play. Man, I like this. I, I really like this throw because I feel like he was really on time. I know somebody asked me on Twitter, like, what I what did I like about Ayat and what did I see? Well, one of the things I saw is, like, I remember making a comment during the Idaho game, and this is not a knock against Clifton at all, but I remember making a, a comment during the Idaho game where we almost had threw an interception on our first drive and it was on a concept similar to this, a little different, but it was like a kind of like a spacing concept, kind of like this, where the tight end was on a spot, you had the um, another guy on a spot inside of him, and then you had outside receiver on an out route Keelan was on an out route he threw the spot but I felt like he was like a second or two late you know I had also mentioned that I thought the tight end made a really good play on the ball but I think if you I remember saying if you were going to throw that you want to throw it right as he's coming out of his break well let's look at Ayat on this throw break ball on his face mask I just think you know right as Schaefer's coming out he's throwing the ball got it on him the guys are on him the guys are there to make the play but he's already got the ball and he's getting 
five more yards after the catch, after contact to get a first down. Let's see it one more time. I thought this was really good. Run up, sit down, ball. Great play. I thought that was a really good play. Second and 10. Man, okay. I got a lot of things. I had a lot of things that I liked about Aya when I watched the game back. This is something that I really enjoyed. So this is a freshman. This is his first ever in a high school college football game or high school. This is his first ever college football game, Division One college football game. You know, this is his first time getting in action. You know, how's he gonna respond? Look at this. This kid is pushing the pile. I don't know how much he weighs. I don't know how big he is, but I don't know. I just, I just thought that was pretty interesting. The kid's trying to push the pile. I don't know if every freshman would, would do that or try to do that. And then he's helping his guy up. I think it's awesome. So we're gonna get a field goal here and it gets blocked unfortunate so let's watch it back so this is gonna get blocked I think number 99 no 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 there's a guy right here whoever number this is he kind of like squeezed through I think it's number 90 right here I think he squeezed through but I think it hit off his face mask or his hand or maybe our guy's helmet but there was a little trash inside here and ended up costing us a field goal so after our first drive in the second quarter we are still score after our first drive into the second quarter we are still scoreless so it is what it is but our defense though our defense they were showing up for sure man just watch man braxton is playing at a super high level right now and you know i'm just so happy to see it he's been somebody who's been balling on special teams for last couple years you know he waited his turn behind some guys and finally getting his time to shine and let's just watch him let's watch him go to work right here watch him shoot this gap shoot it make the tackle and obviously his his guys are right there to clean it up after him but you know he's in there he's in there making the play i don't actually know who was supposed to block him i think 77 was supposed to block him he whiffed and braxton's there to make the play awesome man okay this is awesome i'm actually break this down a little better in some in a, a couple of different in a different view than this but so we're running tampa two here but um jackson's not giving it away right away this is definitely tampa two you got the safety in a cloud or the safety in a half safety in a half he's in a he's in a cloud you got trevin in a cloud here He's a little off different level. The reason he's turning this direction is because the pass strength is this direction. So whoever he's gonna, you know, he's gonna get to this deep middle third, lower third. I don't really know what you would call deep hook. I would call it a deep middle hook probably in Tampa, but Tampa two coverage, he's getting to this deep hook and you know, the, the, the quarterback threw it right to him. Jackson played it really well. He played it really well. Zone turning finding the ball and then this is how you know jackson this is how you know jackson um used to be like a running back or somebody who, who carried the ball in high school watch him set this block up by t-rail t-rail's running up this block he goes inside goes back sets the block up i mean that is that is things you see running backs do inside back outside i don't know what 80 80 didn't want to make this tackle he didn't want to make this tackle because all you got to do is wrap up but Good for the Grizz. And the Grizz are on the board. This is the picture I wanted to show you guys, but the Grizz got on the board with that touchdown. So, cloud, hook, hook, deep middle hook, half, half, cloud. And we are rushing four. So, look at the picture. Look at the picture after pre snap. He's playing cloud, but he has nobody underneath, so he's kind of pushing back, stand underneath it deep hook middle hook the middle looks open but there's nobody on this side of the field except for his running back i think that's a tight end and you got this one receiver so just the running back and the receiver are on this side of the field and he's not even looking at that he's looking right down the middle he gambled and he was wrong let's, let's let it play out tampa two jackson plays it perfectly quarterback throws it right to him and we're off to the races look at that block set up Look at him set that block up. That is awesome. I love it. 80. Gotta make the tackle. You don't. Touchdown Grizzlies. We're dancing. Awesome. 
just awesome. 7 0 Grizz. Our defense has been playing at a really high level lately. Um, I've been really impressed. We've been able to get some good pressure on the quarterback. I think that's something we struggled with early on in the season. Obviously, like I said early in this video, Colorado was, Northern Colorado was, is the worst team in our conference. So we should be doing some of these things against them, but it's good to see them show up on tape. Man, this is the one play. This is the one positive. So we're running man coverage here. You can see it all the way, all the way through. Man, 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 one high, man. I think we got somebody else out here in man. They're going empty. We're rushing for man coverage. Number 80. I just praised Jace Kluswich and everybody's going to have plays where they get got. Everybody's going to have plays where they, I just thought this was a great release. Great catch. The ball's on the throne. It might've been a touchdown if the quarterback would have let him. He didn't, but look at this release. I mean, I love Jace, but this is crazy, <laughs> man. Really good release under thrown ball. 80 makes a really good catch. That's probably the only positive offensive play they had, but I genuinely thought it was pretty impressive. So I thought I put it on here to show because I thought that release was really good. I thought the catch was really good. And yeah, I remember seeing that um, and thinking like, wow, that's, that's a pretty nice catch. <laughs> Man, watch Flink fill this gap. I mean, you know, their running back, and their running back did this a lot. You know, he'd kind of be tippy-toeing around. Maybe that's because he's used to not really getting blocked for very well, or I don't know. But he was tippy-toeing around a lot, and, you know, if you do that with us, you know, we're going to make you pay. Flink meets him at the hole, and he gets nothing after he runs into Flink. Absolutely nothing. You know, he's like juking around but and you want to talk about holding this guy pulls hayden down we get called for holding more than anybody i think anybody in the conference probably i actually don't know that so don't fact check me that's just what i think so it's right um we get holding called on us more than anybody and but we never get holding called on us when it's when it's us we never get holding called on us and this is a perfect example this is a hold this is a hold He's falling back. You see, the, they look for the numbers to be distorted. His number is getting pulled, and he's getting pulled down. I mean, it doesn't matter because they get nothing. Great tackle by Flink. Great tackle by everybody else to come help him out, but that's pretty crazy. I didn't even notice that when I was putting this together, but that's pretty crazy. So, he wanted a call on this. You're not going to get one. That's not PI, but just watch. Um, I think this is Kellen. Dietrich, he comes through untouched. I don't know what this guard is doing. We got a lot of hats. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six hats at the line of scrimmage pre-snap. And I think everybody comes, yeah. So six on five, we're going to zero blitz here. They're in empty, so we got five covering and we're just, we're bringing the house. They got five blockers, they cannot block them all. So Dietrich comes free and it affects the throw. Throws out of bounds. Great play by the Grizz. Now it's third and 10. I think this is probably one of their best drives um, of the game. They were able to get down in our red zone. I can't remember what came of this drive. We'll, pretty sure we'll find out. They might have punted, but this is probably one of their most successful drives throughout this game. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, Dietrich had a good couple of plays this drive. So let's watch it here. Mmm. Mmm. Kale was right there. I know Kale wanted that. Kale made up for it later on against number 18, surprisingly enough. Still hope he's okay. But look at Dietrich. Watch Dietrich. He's over here. This is the pursuit drill. You got you got Levi and um, Kale bringing pressure early. Looks like we're running a Tampa 2 here. Definitely running a Tampa 2. Tampa 2 defense. So they're probably, the quarterback's not probably going to get anything deep. Most likely not. And Dietrich just keeps pursuing the ball. Eventually gets to the quarterback. I always try to think about what it is about, oh yeah, they went for it on 4th and 11. I always try to think about it with teams like this, like what... What is it that's going to change the tie for them? What is it that's, that's going to make them... You know, flip things around. 
me and uh, Coulter had talked about it actually last week about, you know, culture and teams that win and teams that lose. And I told him, you know, I've never been on a team where they where they where we weren't some level of successful. So, you know, in terms of culture and building a culture, I don't know if I've ever been a part of something where you had to build the culture. I think the culture has always kind of been set for me when I got there. So um, I would be interested to know what it's like for a team like this, where the culture is not already set, where the team didn't win previously or where there wasn't an understanding that, you know, we are good year in and year in and year out. You know, I'm blessed to have gone to the University of Montana. I'll say that. Mm, gonna get more pressure on the quarterback this pass does not even get close I believe this is Dietrich again he had a really good drive um, this drive and 18 was taking a beating this isn't the only beating he's gonna take the for the rest of this game this is just the beginning of it to be honest but let's see what we got here we're gonna go zero coverage again so Zero coverage. One, two, three. But this time they got a tight end in the box and they got a running back in the box. So only three receivers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six in the box. I don't know. I mean, we can probably count these guys in the box too. So eight in the box. No high safety. Man on man. Man, man coverage on the outside. And we get there. Basically bring everybody except for Nash. Nash. Okay, yeah. So Nash is covering the Nash is covering the tight end. And I think this is Ryder. Ryder's probably covering the running back. The running back probably stayed in for protection. So Ryder probably ended up blitzing. And we get there. And the ball's not even close. Yeah, so let's watch it here. I mean, just look at this. Get in there. Mmm. Great play. So we get this third and one here. This is not the tush push, but I thought it was pretty interesting because we don't have any running back. We just got like um, Eli in this fullback position and we're just gonna run this, what I think is a QB sneak. And we get it. It ain't no tush push baby, but it works for the Grizz. I'm gonna say that. All right, you're gonna get this read here. Um, actually not a read it's a, a option so he has the option to pitch this to Eli or he has the option to keep it he keeps it but look how the fate gets this D end that's all you need that's all you need watch how he goes that way for one step two steps even and that's all Clifton needs that gives him enough space to get up the field and get the first down about 12 yards on first down so here we go again watch inside you got this mesh concept and he's sitting it down. I put this on here because I think um, corner route by Keelan. I think there's a safety over top of him. So I don't think he wanted to throw that. You know, this is man coverage. So you got one high safety. They're in man, but they're kind of passing things off. Both these guys are going with Ryan. I don't know if anybody went with Schaefer. Oh, yeah, they got the... Okay, so they got somebody on the outside covering them up. I don't know. This coverage is definitely weird. I believe it's man coverage, but the responsibilities are look a little jumbled up. I don't know where everybody's responsibility is at. But... So you're going to get um, Eli on this swing route. I think he had Eli on the swing route. You know, that looks like a pretty good picture to me. Obviously, he's not looking that way. I think he wanted to go deep, maybe to Keelan or uh, Junior probably was on a wheel route on this left side, I would suspect. But the mesh looks kind of weird right now. You know, nobody's really open. I think if you hit Eli right here, I think we've got a pretty good play. This is second and 14. This is after one of our holding penalties, I believe. In the second quarter, we had got a holding penalty on a run play or... It might have been that Clifton run on the option that we got the holding play, but we got a holding play somewhere on this drive and we're backed up behind in the sticks and we got this swing route on this mesh on this mesh concept, the swing to Eli. And I think that's a pretty good play. I think, you know, one on one with the corner slash safety, whichever one he is, I'll take that matchup with Eli all day and I'll pick him to win. We don't get the ball off. We ended up getting sacked. So now it's third and 20. 
<sighs> just backed up in the chains, just sucks, just difficult to get out of, but we find a way to get close to getting out of it on a deep, I think they were just running to the sticks. I don't 100% know, but if you look at all the routes, it looks like everybody was stopping at the sticks at or close to the sticks. Close to the sticks, close to the sticks, close to the sticks. I don't know. I'd be interested to know what this concept is, but you also got um, Racanelli on an under. So take that for what it is. But you got um, Ryan running this deep stop route. It looks like deep curl, deep sticks route. Might have been an in, you know, he's catching it in a stride. Might have been some type of in, stop. But he gets basically one yard away from the first down. So, you know, we were able to find the holes in the defense. Able to get what we needed to when we needed to. Obviously, we don't want to have to try and convert a third and 20 all the time. But we were able to get right outside of getting it. I think it ended up being a fourth and one. But they're running, um, they're running what looks to be quarters over on this side. Three underneath. I don't know what this guy's playing, but looks like quarters to the the picture after the catch looks kind of like quarters. Everybody's deep. They're just trying to keep everything in front of them basically. It's third and 20. You don't want it. This is the last thing you want to happen on the third and 20 that we get 19 yards and now it's fourth and one and now we're you know we're much more likely to get this especially against a team that's unfortunately for them 0-7 i'm gonna run this read but this time he hands it i believe this is a read as well they ran this earlier with osmo i'm not sure who he would be reading on this one whether it be this linebacker or this end i'm sure he's reading one of them it probably was a give read since this guy's you know kind of caught up inside he's already basically out leveraged by eli like right here so that's definitely if he is reading this this um backer right here that's definitely a give read he gave it and eli gets the first down great play on fourth and one option this time he pitches it decent pitch you got a good block here by um junior good block on the outside so they threw a penalty flag here I actually don't know what they threw the penalty on. I think they might have thrown it on Junior for holding. But, yeah. But the penalty, see, my thing was the penalty was, actually, I do know who, I, I actually, I do know who they threw the penalty on. So they didn't throw the, they said they didn't throw the penalty on, on Junior here. They said they threw the penalty on 84 Schaefer. But there's also, if you see down, I don't know if you guys can even see. There was a penalty flag thrown at the, oh yeah, 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 okay. Okay, let me backtrack. They called a legal formation here. I guess either Ryan here didn't check with the ref or Junior didn't check with the ref. It looks really fine to me. I don't know, maybe Junior could go back maybe a step, maybe Ryan could step up a step. It looks, uh, I guess now that I'm kind of looking at it, Ryan does look kind of off. Anyway, so they called at the snap, they called a legal formation, and then they called holding on um, Schaefer here. I didn't really see it. I thought if anything, Junior probably held here. You know, he gets kind of swung around and he's pulling the guy's jersey. But they called it on Schaefer here, and I didn't really, I didn't really think that was holding here. He didn't hold the guy. He's, I mean, I did not think this was holding here. I disagreed with the call, but that's obviously why I'm not a ref. So we move on. Ended up being third and seven after all of that. So it is what it is. We move on, man. You're going to get this wheel route. Oh, this could have been a great touchdown. I mean, you see many times throughout this tape, throughout the games that we watch, like Montana's trying to get the ball down the field. The plays are called to get the ball down the field. Whether we execute on those plays is a different story. I think sometimes, you know, we get pressure. Sometimes this happens. Sometimes that happens. A lot of things happen. But you're going to get this blitz by either this is a backer, or nickel, whoever it is. You're going to get this blitz. And that kind of allows Clifton not to... First off, I'm not Northern Colorado's coach at all. You know, I've never coached a day in my life rather than like Grizz ball and things like that, Grizz camps. But why are you, man, I shouldn't even like, 
I, I'm trying to coach this guy up, but like, why are you? Go get him. Like, there's no reason you should be hesitating. He should go and try to lay Clifton out. Hopefully he doesn't because that's our player. But like, why would you ever stop your feet on a blitz? You're never going to get there. Anyway, this kind of throws Clifton's throw off. Junior gets over the top. He's open. The ball's just a little far. Oh, that's one of the missed, man. Missed opportunity right there. It would have been a great play for us to be able to hit a deep shot, get in the end zone in the first half. You know, I thought we had a really good opportunity right there. So everybody knows Coach Hawk is a special teams guy. Everybody knows Coach Hawk has special teams up his sleeve. We might have done a little too much right here. I think it's a good call. Um, I think it's honestly just Northern Colorado. You know, you're expecting these gunners. So we're going to try to hit this wheel route to, to um, Garrett. Garrett's going to run this wheel route over here. Um, I guess you probably hope that they're playing a man type coverage. They look like they might honestly be in safe here. Yeah, they definitely look like they're in some type of safe here. But you hope that you can catch them in some type of man coverage so that this guy will run with number two, Jackson Jr. And this guy will get caught up behind Garrett. That doesn't happen. We end up running this wheel route and, you know, 23 actually gives 23 props. He plays it really well, you know, plays the middle. Garrett's trying to find the ball, trying to make a play on the ball. He Garrett doesn't know where number 23 is either. I don't think Garrett so much knows where 23 is in comparison to himself. So he tries to make a play on the ball. It's already intercepted. It is what it is. You know, we've hit a lot of special teams plays. I've been talking for weeks on these um, on my video, video breakdowns about when is somebody finally going to catch on. And I might have gotten exactly what I asked for because Northern Colorado, the worst team in the conference, finally caught on. So it is what it is from that aspect. Late in the second quarter, going into halftime. And I think this is when number eight's about to. Well, this is when Riley Wilson starts to turn up. Riley Wilson had four tackles for loss, three sacks and six tackles this guy was balling he had a day let's just watch him he's right here watch his relentless effort watch the effort on this play watch it just watch it go get him everybody's taking their shot everybody's taking their shot hayden took his shot unfortunately missed kale's trying to keep him contained trying not to let him get outside of him kale's doing his job hayden takes a shot misses riley's there to clean it up great play great play so i think man they really hurt their quarterback on this play this is when kale's gonna slam number 18 i don't think he came back in the game it might have been a concussion protocol i don't know i like i've been saying i hope he's okay it was a great hit to look at but i do hope he's okay health wise long term but man they i think they're trying to set this screen up and kale doesn't nobody touches kale nobody puts a hand on kale nobody nothing and they hurt the quarterback for it. The running back, like at first I remember when I was watching this, I'm like, the running back's like trying to not get touched by Kale. <laughs> but this does not end good for number 18. He gets slammed. I think they called it unnecessary roughness on this play. I don't really think it was an unnecessary roughness. You know, he's just trying to get the guy down. But man, I know that hurt. Oh my gosh. Great play for the Grizz. Unfortunate play for number 18. I hope he's okay. That'll be the last time I say it. I hope he's okay. I hope he's able to make it back. Okay. So you're going to get zero coverage here. Braxton's going to bring the pressure. They have six blockers for our six rushers, but the running back doesn't, um, doesn't fill in the right spot. So the running back's on the left side. I don't know who needs to make this distinction that they're not going to have this blocked up. I don't know if they knew pre-snap that they weren't going to have this blocked up. The guard ends up blocking down. The tackles one-on-one -on -one with the end. The running back's on the wrong side. Braxton's free in the quarterback's face. He's got to get the ball off, and it's incomplete. I personally thought that should have been grounding. You can say that, oh, I know they've been doing this a lot in the NFL. You know, you're not supposed to judge intent. Like, what is the rule of the, what does the rule book say? He was in the pocket. He threw it to somewhere where there was no receivers in sight and it was an incomplete pass where it would have been a sack. It is what it is, man. I think this is a really good return by Junior. Making things happen. 
he hasn't really gotten a lot of opportunities in the return game. I think teams know what he can do in the return game. So he hasn't got a ton of opportunities. But when he has, I think he's made the most of it. Man, this, ugh, this man Aaron is so quick. I didn't even get this full release. So we're going to stop it right here. Aaron is going to slightly outside release, come back inside, run the curl, and Kealii Ayat. Somebody please correct me if I'm saying that wrong. I want to get his name right. I think he's going to be a really good player, but I do want to get his name right. Um, Kealii Ayat puts the ball on Aaron. Great route by Aaron. Great finish. Great ball right out of the break. I mean, this is what I meant when I said he played on time. I think he hit Aaron right where you want to have this ball come out of the break and good play on first down man so these are some of the growing pains with a young quarterback you got the blitz coming over here so really look at this picture you got somebody playing what looks to be pre-snap playing man over the top of your number two receiver and you have a safety over top of him that screams blitz all day you know he's gonna blitz he's gonna fill in play man um i actually don't know if this is man i think this is zone but he's gonna blitz he's gonna fill in and play this curl flat zone over here this guy's in a hook in the middle this guy's in a curl flat over here curl flat hook i think it's really a curl flat but you're gonna get junior open right here if you want him you can put the ball at him on this seam route um i thought he had an opportunity to throw it this guy's young so you know he's 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 picking a side and working with it i don't know if he's reached that level to where he's able to recognize when you know there's a blitz coming you know i don't know where his maturation is i don't know how the coaches have been teaching him but this is definitely going to be cover three cover three you can work the seams the seams are open the seams are usually where you can attack defenses in this cover three i think he had a chance to hit junior right here Junior looks fairly open to me. I think that's a really good window. I think maybe he might have been about to throw it, but he might have been a little late. If you're going to throw this after the wall coverage, you probably got to put it on him like right there, especially when the since the safety who's coming from over here off the hash to get to that one high, he's pushing away from Junior. He probably had an opportunity to throw it here. I think he gets, I don't know if he was even looking at it then though. I think he's just working this right side. He didn't get to it. He ended up scrambling out threw the ball away though didn't get a negative play i think that's really good i think that's um very important not to get a negative and to keep us in the right position man just barely missed this throw to schaefer on the looks like an inside post um post by the tight end he's got inside leverage on the corner who's already on the outside of him pre-snap so he's got the leverage you just got to put him on put it on him and there's little things like this that he's going to deal with trying to improve on as, you know, he gets more playing time. He's going to, I think he's definitely going to improve on these things as he gets more playing time, as he gets more mature and more comfortable in the offense. But um, definitely had an opportunity to hit one across the middle here on the tight end. Just missed it a little bit. Barely out of reach. Window was there. He'll get better at it. He's young. But, um... Yeah, he's, he's just young. I just think he's young. So here's going to be the touchdown to Junior. You're going to run this nod. You're going to run these mirrored nod routes. So on the outside, you have these fade routes or these protection fade routes. They're just running outside. They're really not in the read or progression unless they probably get man coverage. If you call this and you probably get man coverage, then that's probably when you're working to the fade routes on the outside. But you get off what looks to be off man. I actually think it's zero coverage. So actually let me break this down for you guys this is actually going to be 10 coverage which is really zero but we call it 10 because the one high safety looks like there's like possibly a one high safety it's not a one high safety he's playing man on the running back the running back stays in to protect so he really just sits in a hook you know kind of in the middle but he's playing man coverage on the running back this is 10 zero or zero coverage um, zero blitz whatever you want to call it there's no high safety nobody's got help over the top and junior takes advantage of it i think uh we got drew deck up here at top i think he runs a decently good route as well but you have this safety who's kind of shaded that way which makes it kind of not look as clean as juniors does junior gets wide open junior runs an amazing route and it's a touchdown for the grizz and look at this throw ayat on his back foot pressure in his face um honestly we picked up the blitz pretty well I think we picked up the blitz pretty well yeah very well actually but off his back foot putting the ball on a rope to junior just awesome you get a really good look at the route here let's watch junior here 
two steps to the out, to the post, wide open touchdown. Grizzlies up 14-0. Man, let's watch Levi fill this gap. Let's watch Levi fill this gap. So he's coming from the outside. He's right here. He's right here. He fills outside first, sees it, and makes the play. Great tackle. Our defense played at a really high level all game long. Okay, this looks like cover six. The reason it, I'm calling it cover six is because you don't really have that distinct one high anymore. This kind of looks like cover two and this kind of looks like quarter quarter to me. Quarter quarter half. So you got a quarter, a quarter and a half field safety. So I'm gonna call this cover six, but look at, look at, look at our, uh, I believe this is Kale. Watch Kale just run through this guy. Put him on his butt. That's why I put this on here. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, we just dominated this guy, these guys in basically every facet of the game. We, we, we showed our dominance on all three phases, special teams at points. You know, we had a blocked field goal. So probably special teams are probably our weakest link during this game with the blocked punt or blocked field goal and the intercepted punt, fake punt which is very unfortunate, but offensively and defensively, I felt like we had a really good game. I'm gonna get this inside zone play by um, Osmo and on first down. And I really wanted to show the domination by AJ. So watch AJ work up to the second level and watch him put this guy in the dirt. Bury him, little nut scrape. <laughs> Tiny bit of nut scrape, it's all good though. <laughs> Oh, so we're running four verts here. Um, Aaron's running a hitch down here, but three verts, I'll call it. Three verts by one, two over here, number two here. Um, Junior gets walled at the bottom down here. Really free release for Drew and I think that's Keelan. Yeah, that's Keelan. Free release for Drew and Keelan, but like they've been doing basically this whole game, they're rushing three on second and third and playing what looks to be, um, I don't know if I call this cover six. I think I'll call this cover six, but they're basically bailing everybody, getting everybody out of there. And we're just hitting the underneath for easy yardage. We'll take that all day. We'll take that all day. And you know, sometimes that was Ayat as well on that play. So let's go back and look at it. Sometimes that's just what it is. Everything deep is taken everything deep, you know don't try to force it second and three just get a first down easy easy completion i like it we move on to the next one so i'm gonna get zero coverage again here man this is what like third or fourth play of zero of us just bringing the house so we're bringing six they're in empty so they got five receivers we have five dbs they have five blockers and they have we have six rushers they have five blockers one quarterback so the quarterback's got to beat a man somebody on the outside has to win fast you probably preferably want something short or a fade but we're playing in that middle range where it's like off we're playing catch so those fades are kind of tough to hit unless you can set them up really fast you probably want something like a slant and under something real quick to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands we got a free rusher right up the middle and on the outside they didn't really pick this blitz up very well at all. The guard, you know, guard doesn't really get anything. We're free on the outside and put a nice little hit on the quarterback. Tough for him. Got Flink and got Levi. The two big sky boys coming free on the out, inside and outside. And they put a decent little hit on the quarterback. Oh yeah. So man, Northern Colorado actually got a first down off of this. That's why I put this on here. Northern Colorado actually got a first down off of this. They called this roughing the passer. The ball's released there. Let's watch Levi's steps. One, he took one step. This, this is absolutely ridiculous. Ball's released there. Levi takes one step before he touches the quarterback and he doesn't land on him or anything. Pay attention. He doesn't land on him 
He just bumps him with his shoulder. Doesn't hit him in the helmet. Doesn't hit him in the neck or head area. It's a clean hit. He doesn't really try to lay him out. Just letting him know we're there. They called rough in the past draw on it. Um, Northern Colorado's drive continued. And, you know, we live to fight another day. Man, watch. First off, on the outside here, you got who I think is Nash blowing this play up on the outside, but you got uh, you got Braxton on the inside, just creating havoc on the inside, making a play in there. These guys were flying around on Saturday, making plays, just creating chaos in here on this um, Colorado offense. Quarterback tries to keep it. I don't know what they were doing. I truly don't know what, what the, this kind of looks like, man, <clears throat> <clears throat> this kind of looks like they were trying to do exactly what um, Sac State did on the first touchdown against Montana State last week. This honestly is probably definitely that play. I feel like they might have been trying to either get it to him or fake it to this guy coming back across number 80. It doesn't work out. It, 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 I mean, nobody really blocks. It's not a clean picture for the quarterback, and we take him down for a loss. Already on a second 11, so third and 15 now. And he gets pressure again. Pressure in his face again. This time, the pressure is brought by, I think, Flink again. Yeah. Flink is going to engage this running back. Look at him right here. Here's the running back. Here's Flink. Flink's going to get pressure on the quarterback's face, and that affects the throw 100%. Mm. <clears throat> Look at it. Mm, got his arm on it. His hand on his arm. Great play by Flink. Hayden's coming through here as well. I don't think he gets as close as Flink. Levi's there as well. We're just collapsing the pocket in the quarterback's face, and he cannot do anything. Everybody's there. Just meet at the quarterback. Somebody's going to get there. Okay, we got Clifton back in the game. First play, we're going to go a read. Um, you got these two pullers coming around for the lead block for Clifton. And I think it's a really good play design. Everybody follows Xavier around. And Clifton gets about 20 yards on the play. Great run play. Watch the pullers coming around. One block. Two blocks. That's how you draw it up. One. Two. And we're off. Great play. Great play. Man, this is really good. This is really good by Clifton. And really good by Aaron on the slant. Way to make the play. Watch the slant by Aaron up top. Doesn't give it away too much with his body leverage. On the stick. Good low ball with the DB right there to make a play on it. And first down Grizzlies. Great play. Mm. Man. I'm waiting for the day that Clifton puts a move on somebody and makes him touch earth. Puts a nasty move on somebody, but it's a really good run on first down, first and 10. <clears throat> Getting some good yardage. Gonna get the read. The read guy takes Xavier. So Clifton's gonna pull it. This is honestly the same play from earlier with the two pullers right here. Lead blocking, read, and they, man, they're getting these blocks very well one block two block and it's Clifton one on one with the safety we get 12 yards on first down I'm gonna get this read again the same play again now you have um, now you have Eli in the game instead of Xavier getting the read he hands it this time I think he handed it because, you know, you have this guy here running at him, but you have this guy as well, so. But you got this guy around the edge as well. So, um, I think this is a give read. I think it could have turned out bad if this guy would have been able to make a play on it. He didn't. 
Eli made a miss, and we get like 10 or 11 yards off of it. Great play for us. We went very fast after that next play. There's still like 25 seconds on the play clock, and we got this power play. Quick power. Going power real quick. We got the guard pulling around. Find work in there. Get to that linebacker. Eli does the rest. Touchdown. Touchdown, Grizzlies. We love it. That's what we like to see. Man. Okay. Once again, I'll have a better look at this from the second angle, but we're going to go um, Tampa 2 again. Braxton's playing this hook. I don't know why he threw this. You're going to see it from the other angle. This guy was never open. Braxton's watching his eyes the whole way. Braxton breaks on the ball, and we got a touchdown. I'm going to show you guys the other angle. So look at this. Tampa 2. What is Tampa 2? Cloud. Half. Hook. Deep middle hook. Hook. Flat. Cloud. Or half. Half, half. These are half field safeties. He's that technically that middle control. A lot of times you can hit underneath on here because everybody's kind of backing out so you can get those unders. Things of that nature. You cannot get this. This is not open. This is not open. This was never open. Braxton is looking directly at you during this whole route. He's looking directly at you. He never moved. Your receiver's not open. Braxton will take that all day. And he runs it in for a touchdown. Great play by Braxton. He's been playing at a really high level. Been really happy with what he's been able to put on tape. Been, what, been really happy with what he's been able to show us. Um, you know, he's, he's showing all his full skills, and I'm really happy for him. We got a cover three here. This is going to be another sack by Riley Wilson, I believe. You're going to get this play action by Northern Colorado. Riley's going to beat the tackle fairly easily. He gets pretty overextended. Riley's a really quick guy, though. Knock the hands down. Sack. <laughs> I think number three was slow to give up, get up after this, too. But look at Riley. Get there. Perfect play. Perfect tackle. We love to see it. Another TFL. Who is it this time? Gub getting the penetration. So once again, we got an odd front here. Gub's head up with the, the center. I think it might be a shade. But, you know, odd front. And Gub's going to win easily. And then you got um, <clears throat> Levi in here to clean it up as well. And Flink right there. So, you know, we were getting in there fairly easily defensively all game. You know, I don't think we struggled to get pressure on the quarterback. I don't think we struggled to get TFLs. I don't think we struggled to get sacks. I think it, this game is a good momentum booster for our defense, good momentum booster for our offense, give everybody confidence going into a tough um, home game, night game against Sacramento State. I think it's going to be awesome. Man, so we're going to get this wheel route by junior up top and i think we had a chance on it i think you kind of got to just put it out there a little more the db did make a really good play on it i'm not gonna lie um i think maybe if you put some more air on it there might have a chance i can't it can't go understated that the db made a pretty decent play on the ball he wasn't even in phase and looked back for the ball might have been able to make a looks like he might have been able to make an interception i think maybe if we put this a little more out there junior might have a touchdown so this is the second time now that you know we've tried to hit junior deep trying to go deep on on routes and are just unable to connect but i think this goes against what everybody had been saying early on in the season that we're not getting the ball down the field we're not trying to get the ball down the field we are trying to get the ball down the field it just isn't so much connecting all the time which is the frustrating part which I know we will connect on it as the season wanes on. Another tackle for no gain. Got a bunch of maroon jerseys. Look at Jackson. Jackson had a pick six already. Watch him come fill this gap right here. Nice. And then wait for the Calvary to come. Great play. Great physical play. TC locked up in coverage. They wanted a penalty. They're not going to get one. And then you got Jackson here again. Jackson just made that tackle on that first play. He's coming here around the edge on the blitz. And they're going to get nothing. 
great play by TC. Man, Eli has been running really successfully. He had 100 yards in this game. He's a Jerry Rice Award watch list player. Um, but it just feels like whenever he gets 100, whenever he gets a lot of rushing yards, you know, he had like a quiet 100 in this game. He had like 106 on like 14 carries. He averaged like seven yards a carry, which is really good. But it didn't even feel like that throughout the course of the game. It didn't feel like I saw him busting a bunch of big runs. Obviously, there was this one, the one in the first quarter. There were runs here and there that obviously you're like, oh, that's a really nice run. But it just felt like it was a quiet 100. Really good game by him. He's having a really good season. Really happy for him. But great run right there. Another good run. Man, I thought this was really good because, you know, sometimes, sometimes they got you. Sometimes they got you. Well, when they do have you sometimes, what are you going to do about it? This is what Eli is going to do about it. Juking? Nah, forget it. I'm going to just run through your face. I'm just going to run through your face and get what I can. Awesome play. Man, so I felt like this was another aspect of Ayat and his maturation. Um, he's going to work the bottom here on this out route, and I'm pretty sure it's completed. But you got to look at the down and distance. It's like third and seven here. And this is only like a four to five yard route. And the DB's right on him. The DB, first of all, the DB's already out left. Well, let me let you guys see the play play out first before I get my thoughts on it. So you're going to get like this. I, I call it spacing kind of. Realistically, this should probably go to the tight. This should probably go to one of these guys here. The out route is fine. It's completed, but it's not completed for a first down. We want to get the first down. I think one of these tight ends has a better shot at getting that first down. So you're going to get this spacing type of spacing concept with the two tight ends on the inside. I think just like he did in the first, I think just like he did in the first half when he put it on the tight end right at his break. If you do that here to Barker, we've got a first down. I mean, right when you're throwing it to Aaron, if you would have instead threw it to Barker, I think we could have had a first down. Obviously, this is his first game playing D1 football. I know Coach Pease is going to talk to him about this. I know Coach Pease is probably coaching him up on him, exactly what I'm seeing here, too. But also, to take it even further, um, you got um, you got Junior here on the inside running a slant route, and he's virtually wide open with nobody on him. You got this safety pushing back to this one high. It looks kind of like off man cup or no, it looks like cover three. It's cover three. So you got these zones on the inside, but the middle is wide open. You got, you know, you got Junior wide open in the middle. He chose to work the left side, which is not bad. I think he should have just worked one of the tight ends, but also he had Junior wide open across the middle. I think we had a chance here. Um, obviously, it's a completion, so that's better than nothing. He's growing. I know he's going to learn. Like I keep saying, it's his first game. I really do, did enjoy what I saw from him in his first game. There's a lot of room to grow, obviously, to improve. He's a young guy, and I know he'll get it right. So good to see him out there, though. Good to see him be able to operate the offense. Good to see him to be able to make plays when his number gets called. It's really cool to see. Love that for young guys. Once again, you're going to have Flink here. Flink's right here on the edge. He's going to make this play, and it just seemed like he was all over the place. Look at look at this tight end. Look how fast Flink shoots the gap on this tackle. The guy, the, the tight end just ducks his head. Never duck your head. Never duck your head. Because things like that happen. Great play for Flink. Awesome. Fourth quarter. Start of the fourth quarter, and what are we going to do? Riley Wilson's going to get in here on another sack. So Riley Wilson is right here. It's coming in on the blitz and he goes through untouched. I don't know who was supposed to be blocking him. I think it was number 63 or maybe this guy, but you got, this guy's not blocking anybody. I, man, I, I'm not trying to bash these guys or anything, but I don't know what this is. I genuinely don't know what this is. I don't know if he's trying to stay here just in case he has to help the tackle. I don't know if he thought the center had him. I don't know. But this is not good enough on Northern Colorado's standpoint. Great for us. Riley gets through. Basically, I mean, he was touched because the guy's trying to block him with his back turned to him, which I've never really seen happen in the history of football work for anybody. But it's definitely a tactic. And Riley gets there for the sack. I mean... I don't know. 
Maybe they thought there was more pressure coming on the outside. I don't know. You got Gub in there too, working. But really, one on one, him in the center. The center wasn't able to get the job done. Riley comes in, gets his third sack of the game. Love to see it. Count him out. He counted him out. It was pretty cool. Going to get this read again. This is a play I've been seeing a lot with um, Osmo and Eli on this. Um, I guess you would call it like an outside or kind of they got a puller on the inside. So I feel like it'd be a power read. But the backer chooses Osmo. Clifton pulls it. I think he was kind of fumbling the snap around too, but pulls it and gets 10 yards on first down. Great play. In the red zone now. Going to go that option, fake option. He can pitch it. The guy hesitates for a second, and Clifton makes him pay. Shuffle your feet, and we're going to get 15 yards on, was that, third and five? 15 yards on third and five. And everybody's pushing the pile. Push the pile. Lineman pushing the pile. Finishing on top. Let's go. Man, this play for us has been... We've been almost like 100% on this play. It's been really successful. We're going to get a hold here, I believe. So I'm pretty sure that's what brings this play back. But this play for us this year has been super successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They called a hold on um, Liam here, which is pretty unfortunate. I think it's the right call, though. I don't know if I put the end zone on here. No, I didn't. But you got the hold there on Liam and... It's really unfortunate because, you know, we've been really successful on this play. We ended up getting back to this play later on. But, yeah. So, that backs us up to first and goal. And we score on the first play. I think we had actually gotten a, uh, we got a delay a game before this play as well. So, we had the, we had the holding. And then we had to the delay a game. And then we're going to get this, um corner concept so you got a spot by Aaron you got a corner by Racanelli and you got a swing by Junior really good concept Racanelli runs a really good route just wins right away he's got off man coverage so it looks like man coverage actually this is going to be 10 no it's not 10 this is man this is man coverage just regular man coverage um they're rushing four and Racanelli wins I don't know what their safety was doing. I don't know like if he was maybe looking at the quarterback, maybe looking inside, but he didn't move his feet. And Racanelli won. Great touchdown for him. Great touchdown for him. Great play for him. Great route. Great everything. Mm, Levi is bringing the heat. This quarterback was shook on this play. Look at Levi. They're trying to set up this screen to the running back. They don't even really get to get into it because nobody touches Levi. Levi comes through untouched, and he just gets rid of the ball real quick. Real quick. Not a bad play for him. I put this on here to highlight Drew. Drew, I believe, broke his – or no, he didn't break. I think he had an AC joint injury or a shoulder injury early on in the season. Um, he was dealing with something with his shoulder that kept him out for early on in the season. I know he's been here for some time. Drew's my dog, man. I'm so happy to see him to be able to get some playing time, get in there on the return game, making things happen on the return game. Just just awesome to see. Really good to see Drew make plays, man. Really cool. So you got Ayat back in there. He's going to scramble, get what he can. Looks like... Um, Trying to hit the seams on this side. Scramble move by Junior. Didn't end up getting the ball. So he gets out of bounds for five yards, six yards. Run play. And, you know, this is when, man, this. <laughs> look at the finish to this run by Eli. Just look at the finish to this run. Ayat hands it off. He gets through almost untouched again. This guy kind of trips him up. But it's blocked up really well. Great blocks. Look at look at AJ on this block. Look at AJ getting up to the second level. Sealing that guy. Great block. And look at the finish to this. Watch this guy try to tackle Eli. He's partially getting blocked, but we don't care about that. Run him over. Thank you. Great play. Another good run. This is kind of when Eli started to impose his will a little bit, getting 10 to 15 yards on every run, every time he touches the ball. He's going to bounce this one out. 
Tries to fit it inside, nothing in there. Bounce it out, you got good blocks on the outside. And he gets nine. So I think they caught a holding on that last play. I think they caught a holding on um, Schaefer on the outside. I think they called it right here. Which doesn't look like it's too bad of a call. Kind of looks like he impeded him. But these are the things I was talking about early in the video, you know, holding calls, penalties, just holding penalties. I feel like we've gotten so many holding penalties. I feel like we get none of them on our defense, but offensively we get a ton of holding penalties called. Definitely something that we need to look at. Definitely something that we should look to improve on. But um, I'm not going to harp on that too much because we did ultimately get a win. So it is what it is. I'm going to get this option play by Ayat. I think I like how he really presses it and forces these guys to determine who they're going to take before he gives it off to Eli. And look at the finish to the run. Look at the finish to the run. He's not okay with just, you know, kind of trying to coast to the sidelines and get out of bounds and stay safe. No, he's lowering the shoulder and bringing the hat to this guy. Great play. Oh, man, this is a really cool play. So this is what I was talking about earlier that they threw to Xavier. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is the play I was talking about uh, that they threw to Xavier earlier. Um, they brought Xavier in motion. I don't have the full play. They brought Xavier in motion and they motioned out Osmo out in front of him just as a lead blocker. So, and then you have um, the receivers running a, a spot route. Man, you have the receivers running a spot here and a corner here and looks to be maybe a. a stop right up top but spot corner swing with the lead blocker they just give it straight to xavier with the osmo lead blocking and xavier makes things happen on second and 13. just a really cool play i remember mentioning early in the on in the season how i think xavier is used best when you get the ball in his hands outside the tackles um where he can make plays happen make things happen in the open field i thought that was a really decent play design um and i thought it worked out well to get the ball in xavier's hands mesh and he's just gonna run it so i think this is really good he gets a little pressure you're gonna run this mesh concept inside they're in zone so you know you maybe could have hit him but by the time um ryan opens up he's already scrambling and he goes to get the first down on third and two that's all you can ask for man keep the chains moving keep us in the game keep our offense on the field love it hand off to osmo and once again, look at AJ working up to the second level. You got this wham across with the tight end. Look at AJ securing that block. And we are finishing running over guys. I know Hawk loves this, but I really like this block. I really like the, 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 the play up front. They got these guys sealed off. I mean, this is a this this is really done well. This is really done well. Blocked up really well. And we're getting like 20 yards into the red zone here we go again back with this play we're back with it we're gonna try it again and once again we're successful i would love to know the success rate of this play i think we've been have to be above 90 percent got to be close to 100 percent on this play i mean we've been really successful on this play this year i don't know it feels like the mentality of our team gets really nasty i mean the mentality of our team is already really nasty and aggressive but when I watch the blocks on this play, I just see guys getting mauled and ran over and, you know, a bunch of guys getting, being really physical. I mean, just look at the end of this. Look at the end of this. He's blocking him into the end zone. Just aggressive. I love it. I love it. Well, that's going to do it for my video. The Grizz won 40 to 0 against Northern Colorado. The Grizz have Sac State this week. I don't actually know where Sac State is ranked. I haven't looked at I, I, I think I peeked at the polls this morning, but I didn't really see where they were ranked at this morning. But it's going to be a top 10 matchup, big sky matchup. Sac State just um, played Idaho State. They beat them 51 to 14 or 51 to 20. They beat them pretty handedly. 
Grizz turn to get a shot at Sac State. Sac State has lost to Idaho. Sac State has also lost to Montana State. Montana has not played Montana State yet, but Montana beat Idaho if there's an engage there. It'll be an interesting game. I didn't see Caden Bennett play a lot last week. I don't know what that was. Their freshman quarterback looked really good against Idaho State. They had a true freshman. I see a lot of Big Sky teams now playing a bunch of freshmen, giving them reps late in games, you know, because of the redshirt rules. I think that's to be expected from a lot of FCS teams, probably a lot of FBS teams as well well but i'm excited for the game this week i'm actually not going to be on the radio I'm going out of town this weekend so um look for my breakdown video next week when i break down the game versus montana and sac state following the game next week um i'm really excited for this game i think it's going to be a really exciting game i think montana has to take care of the ball i think they have to hit their big plays on offense i think the defense has to be really well if Caden bennett plays you got to get pressure on him take him out of the game if the freshman quarterback plays you definitely got to put pressure on him make him uncomfortable back there i think um defensively we'll be able to hang with sac state i think we have one of the better defenses in the big sky probably one of the better defenses in the country and i think offensively we have to execute at a high level we have to execute at a high level we have to be sound offensively we can't get a lot of holding penalties we can't shoot ourselves in the foot we can't turn over the ball you know we have to play a really good game we have to play a really sound game and i think we are going to be able to do that and i think when we do that we will come out victorious against sac state so excuse me gosh i appreciate you guys checking in on me today this week i appreciate you guys tapping in i'll catch you guys next week and see you guys